Hello everyone and welcome to the 1.6 video on solving rational equations. Uh, something I want to point out to you to begin is when again you see the word rational, I would look at the word ratio and think about the first video of this unit, which is all about the different types of real numbers. One of them was rational. And you might remember rational meant you can write as a fraction. So all of these equations that we're solving today are going to have to do with fractions. And as soon as I see fractions and I think about combining fractions, a few things come to mind. Um, a common denominator comes to mind, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But something else that comes to mind when I see something written as a fraction, like 3 over x or 4 over x minus 1 or even 5x over 2x minus 3, Every single one of these has a problem. Remember that we cannot divide by zero in math. So if we cannot divide by zero, that really means that the denominator cannot be zero. So before we start the actual lesson on solving these equations, I want to remind you that we need to always consider which values we cannot have before we start the problem. For instance, if I look back at this first example, the number that would cause this denominator to be zero is zero itself. So x could not be zero, because I can't divide by zero. In this case, I know that x minus one cannot equal zero, because the denominator cannot be. So that means that x can be everything else but one. And if I had this situation, I know that the denominator 2x minus 3 cannot equal 0, so 2x cannot equal 3, or x cannot equal 3 halves, or 1.5. What these are called are extraneous solutions, and we'll get into the details of that soon, but just keep in mind that you always should check and see what is not possible first. So moving on to the idea of a common denominator or a least common denominator. Its technical definition is it is the simplest expression that every denominator is a factor of. Um, when I see the word factor, it means that what numbers multiply into a larger number. Also, the word factor means exactly what you think it means. Think about factoring, like a quadratic, um, two numbers that multiply to be something and add to be something else. And so one of the goals before we start solving equations is talking about how to find a common denominator again, just for brief review. So something you're probably used to is like this first example. If I'm adding these fractions together, I need to think about the first number that these all multiply into, or the simplest expression that all three of these are a factor of. So think about that. What is the first number that these three numbers all multiply into evenly? If you're thinking 12, I agree with you. So if you were to actually get a common denominator, you would need to multiply this fraction by what it needs to get 12. So you'd multiply this one by 3 over 3, this one by 2 over 2, and this one by 4 over 4. The reason I write it like this is because technically 3 over 3, 2 over 2, and 4 over 4 are really, really 1. So when you multiply by 1 in math, it doesn't change the end value, it just changed how it looks. So remember, this is a good process when you're finding a common denominator. So the LCD would be 12 in this instance. This next example, it's not as obvious. Um, however, if we're trying to find the least common denominator or the simplest expression that has a common factor, I notice that the second example has something squared. So what if we considered factoring and even the greatest common factor. So if I looked at this first term, two numbers that multiply to be negative 4 and add to be 0, x plus 2, x minus 2. The second one, we will hopefully get something to match. If I look at these two terms, I notice that I can take a GCF out of 3, and I'm left with x plus 2. So now I notice that both fractions do have an x plus 2 in common. However, this fraction has a 3 that this one needs, and this fraction has an x minus 2 that this one needs. x plus 2 and x minus 2 are two different things because of the sign. So now for the LCD. Um, in order to determine the LCD or common denominator, you need to think about what each 
fraction has and needs in order to be combined together, so they need to match exactly. So both of these fractions need that 3, both of the fractions need the x minus 2, and both of the fractions already have the x plus 2. We only write the x plus 2 once because the LCD represents what needs to be in common. So based on that, I would like you to pause the video and write down what you think the LCD is for the third example. So please pause now. So my answer was that each fraction needed both the x minus 6 and the x plus 2. So if I were actually finding the common denominator, this fraction would have to be multiplied by this factor of x minus 6, and this one would have to be multiplied by the factor of x plus 2. This, again, is really 1, and this is really 1 if you divide. So you're not changing the final answer, you're just changing how it looks. Now to solving. Steps to solve a rational equation. So the first thing we do, just like the previous examples, is find the least common denominator. So in this example, the 17 is really over 1, so let's think about what each fraction needs. This one has a 4, it would need the x and the 1. This one has an x, it would need the 4 and the 1, and this one has a 1, so it would need the 4 and the x. Now multiplying by 1 doesn't really make a difference. So in this case, I would say that the least, least common denominator is 4x. The next thing we want to do is multiply each term by the LCD to get things to cancel and to eliminate the denominator. Or you can think of it like <clears throat> these past examples that we multiply each fraction by what it needs. It's really based on you. Um, I've noticed from teaching this for a while that a lot of students do prefer the second option. So I will show that to you in the video, but I could also show you the other method at another point. So if I wrote down the original problem, 1 fourth minus 14 over x equals 17. This first fraction has the 4, and it needs the x in order to get the LCD. So you'd multiply top and bottom by x over x. The second fraction has the x, so it needs the 4 over 4. This third fraction only has a 1, so it needs both the 4 and the x, so you'd multiply by 4x over 4x. After that, you would simplify. This can really become x over 4x minus uh, 4 times 14 is 56. So 56 over 4x equals 17 times 4 is 68x over 4x. Notice now that all three of these have the same denominator, which is what you want. Um, when you multiply it out, these three should match. What I would do at this point is go back to this idea about multiplying each term by the LCD. If I, I don't know if anyone else is thinking it, but this denominator is kind of a pain. If I could get rid of this denominator, the problem would be a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is multiply the entire equation and distribute in the 4x. And when I do that, this 4x uh, crosses out with this 4x. This 4x crosses out with this one. And this one crosses out with this one. So I will write it out the long way for this first example, just so you can see what I'm doing. So 4x times x over 4x crossed out, minus 4x times 56 over 4x crossed out, equals 4x times 68x over 4x crossed out. So what's interesting is that you're only left with what was on the in the numerator, I mean, x minus 56 equals 68x. And so if you continue to solve this, if you subtract the x to the other side, you would get negative 56 equals 67x. You would divide by what's by the x. So you get an absolutely delightful answer of negative 56 67 so What a joy. Um, now, just to let you know, this answer does work. It isn't the most joyous. What you could do is figure out what this is a, de is a decimal, and you could plug it back in 4x to see if it works and see if this side of the equation equals 17. It does, but what's even more important is thinking about this idea of the extraneous solutions. Let's look back at the original. Because I have this variable in the denominator, I need to consider that idea that we talked about on the first slide that we cannot divide by zero. So 
I know that x cannot be 0 because 14 divided by 0 would cause a problem. So my extraneous solution is that x cannot be 0. Since the answer that I got was not 0, this answer should work. And I've already plugged this answer in, so I know it does work. Um, we will be talking about other ways to solve this in class tomorrow for a warm-up. I will not do it in the video right now, but that is going to be a discussion tomorrow. One thing I do want to make clear before we go to the other examples, though, is here is what I do not want to see on a test. Let's say you're at this point, and you know that you're supposed to multiply by 4x to get rid of it, but you do this instead. Let's say you just cross out the denominators because you know that everything's going to cross out anyway. This move right here is technically illegal. Please, please, please do not show this to me on a test. That will not go well. What I would suggest doing instead is what I showed here, that you understand that you're multiplying the entire thing by the least common denominator. This will get you points. This will not. All right, the second example. First thing we want to do is find the least common denominator. So let's think about what each thing needs. LCD. This first one has an x minus 2. This second fraction has an x plus 3. This third fraction is squared, and we're trying to find factors, so I'm going to factor. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 6 and add to be 1, technically, is x plus 3, x minus 2. How extremely convenient that these factors are the exact same as the ones that I already give you. It's like I planned it or something. Strange. So it seems to me that the LCD would have to be x minus 2 and x plus 3. Because that's what each fraction needs. So let me rewrite the problem. 1 minus x minus 2 plus, notice I'm leaving some room, 3 over x plus 3 equals 4 over x plus 3, x minus 2. This third fraction already has both pieces of the LCD, so I'm going to leave that alone. This fraction has the x plus 3, but it needs the x minus 2, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom there. And this piece needs the x plus 3, so I'll multiply top and bottom here. Uh, remember that the x plus 3 is different than the x minus 2, uh, because of the different plus and minus signs going on. So what we want to do here is simplify. Let's multiply the 1 into here and the 3 into here and leave our common denominators. So it's really 1 times x plus 3 over x plus 3, x minus 2, plus 3 times x minus 2 over x plus 3, x minus 2, equals 4 over the same LCD. So what we could do now to make this a little bit less complicated is we could technically, this is the step I was talking about that you need, we can multiply everything by the LCD. And if I distribute these two parentheses into all three terms, all of the denominators will cancel out. So on the last example, I did show you that work the long way here. As long as you show this step, you're showing me you understand that. So we can write just the numerators. 1 times x plus 3 plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 4. And we can solve from there. x plus 3 plus 3x minus 6 equals 4. 4x minus 3 equals 4. Add the 3. 4x equals 7. So x equals 7 fourths. And I think that's my answer. But what we can do is go back up and check the extraneous solutions. At the beginning of the problem, or even now, you can say to yourself, well, I know that x minus 2 cannot be 0, and I know that x plus 3 cannot be 0. So I know that x cannot be 2, and x cannot be negative 3. Both of these are not my answer, so I know that 7 fourths is OK. So 7 fourths is great. What you also could do is plug the 7 fourths into the original problem anytime you see an x and see if this side equals this side. So the last example I will do briefly on a second video for section 1.6. I just wanted to make sure to be thorough. So please join me on video two. Thank you.